Dad, I've messed up. Gone and left this week's game in the dog and duck. Oh, blimey, Keith, you tit. Oh, you're best off online and order a new one. I mean, it's a 20-year-old game. It can't be that expensive, can it? Get on eBay. Yeah, it's all right, yeah, isn't it? Oh, I see. It's actually quite pricey. Let me see. Oh, holy moly, that's a lot. Oh, better check that old uh, CX our lad's always on about. Oh, yes, okay, yes. Mm. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, no, look, it's still quite pricey there as well. Oh, but I can get it on the Nintendo Switch for peanuts. Oh, well, there you go, then. Crisis averted. Next round is very much on you, lad. <laughs> Welcome, ladles and jelly spoons, fellow nostalgia seekers, to Kai Mathie's YouTube channel, coming at you live via videotape from the Orbital Broadcast Bunker, Britain's first and only airborne subterranean studio, don't you know? Today we're diving into the colourful and quirky world of Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door for the GameCube. Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, released in 2004 for the Nintendo GameCube. It's an RPG that's as flat as it is fabulous. You play Mario, navigating through a world that looks like it was crafted by a very creative five-year-old with a lot of craft paper. And you know, don't forget the brilliant writing. The humour in this game is sharper than my tea making skills and I do make a mean cuppa, but you know, back to Mario. So what makes this one so special? I'm glad you asked. This game took everything we loved about the original Paper Mario and cranked it up a notch. The combat system was turn-based but added action commands to keep you on your toes. Plus the story is rich with colourful characters and witty dialogue. Hey, oh, speaking of dialogue, the interactions in this game are pure gold. I remember laughing out loud at some of the scenes or hello well in as the kids say. So it's, uh, it's not just about jumping on Goombas and saving princesses then? Mm. It's an adventure filled with puzzles, mysteries and some of the most memorable boss battles you'll find in any RPG. And let's not forget that charming art style that still holds up today. No, yeah, it's a game that proves you don't need fancy graphics to create a timeless experience, just good storytelling, engaging gameplay and a beer banter. Nintendo unveiled the Thousand Year Door at the 2003 Game Developers Conference. Before it hit the shelves, it was announced as a direct sequel to the Nintendo 64 game Paper Mario. In Japan, it was temporarily called Mario Story 2, whilst in North America, it was known as Paper Mario 2. Fans got a sneak peek of the game at E3 in 2004, where they could play through Hooktail Castle and a special Bowser level. The game launched in July of 2004 in Japan, followed by releases in October in North America and November in Europe and Australia. There's a fun nugget for you trivia lovers out there. When you first stroll into Petalburg in Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door, keep an eye out for a small toad who's quite the video game enthusiast. This little guy's dialogue will change as you progress through game, and it's a lovely little nod to the other titles by Intelligent Systems. When you first meet him, he's buzzing about Fire Emblem for the Game Boy Advanced. Then around the time you make it to Hooktail's Castle, he's switched gears and starts talking about Paper Mario for the Nintendo 64. Finally, after you've defeated Hooktail and returned to town, he'll be all excited about playing Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. God, now that's what I call meta. The Thousand Year Door is a role-playing game, RPG, with some unique twists. You play as a flat, two-dimensional Mario, exploring paper-like worlds. Your main goal is to find seven crystal stars by solving puzzles and defeating enemies. In the game world, you can find items that help you both in and out of battles, like healing Mario and his partner, or hurting the baddies. You can also buy, find and win badges that use badge points to equip. These badges can boost your skills or give Mario new abilities. As you play, you'll add up to seven characters in your party, each with their own special skills needed for solving the puzzles, like activating switches or removing barriers. 
Mario also gets cursed abilities that lets him fold into a boat or paper aeroplane when he stands on special panels. Now between chapters you control Peach in the x Nort Fortress and Bowser in side-scrolling levels not unlike the original Super Mario Brothers. Combat in the Thousand Year Door uses a turn-based system. When Mario touches an enemy, the game shifts into a battle screen set on a stage. If you jump or hammer an enemy before the battle starts, you get a first strike and deal damage early on. Enemies can also strike first. In battles you control Mario and his partners, choosing actions like attacking, using items or swapping partners. Timed button presses can make attacks and defence more effective. For instance, pressing a button when Mario jumps lets him hit twice. Some attacks only hit ground enemies and jumping on spiky enemies will also hurt Mario. Each character has art points HP that decrease when attacked. If a partner's HP reaches zero, they can't fight until they're revived, and if Mario's HP hits zero, the game ends and you restart from your last save point. Strong attacks need flower points FP, which Mario and his partners share. Special attacks unlocked by collecting crystal stars need star power. Winning battles earns star points. Get 100 star points, Mario levels up, boosting HP, FP or your BP. And the audience watches your battles and reacts to your performance. If you do well, they cheer and restore star power or even throw helpful items. But if you do poorly, they might throw harmful objects or leave. The audience starts small but can grow up to 200 as you level up, don't you know? Now, here's another reference for you. In the scene where Peach takes a data disc from Grudo's room and puts it into his computer, the image shown on computer screen is the startup theme from the Famicom Disk System add-on for the Famicom, aka the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, it was released only in Japan and the Disk System uses a floppy disk system instead of cartridges and it helped pioneer the concept of saving game progress. I mean, some of Nintendo's most famous games, such as Metroid and The Legend of Zelda, were first released on this add-on. The Thousand Year Door takes place in the Mushroom Kingdom, with the town of Rogueport as the central hub connecting all the game's locations. The story is split into a prologue and eight chapters, each set in a unique area. For instance, Glitzville is a floating city famous for its fighting arena. The game features a mix of familiar Mario characters like Boo and new ones created just for this game, such as the x Knots. Whilst in the uh, x Nort base near end game, you propel yourself upwards into an air conditioning vent. Now normally you'd go all the way to the left, but instead if you go all the way to the right and you hit another wall and another vent, if you turn yourself paper thin and fall into the chamber below, you'll be in this changing room where you open up the curtains and you and your allies will be transformed into 8-bit sprites just like the other Mario RPGs. When Mario approaches the arena in Glitzville for the battle with Rock Hawk, no, madam, not that. One of the crowd members calls him Jumpman. Now, this is the name that Mario went by in the original Donkey Kong, don't you know? What say before we dive back into the thrilling world of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, we take a quick pit stop. If you're enjoying this month's retrospective review, why not give us a like? It's easier than beating Hooktail without that special badge, I promise. And if you're not already subscribed, well what are you waiting for? I mean, our Keith might not know a game killed from a teapot, but even he's subscribed. Am I? And so anyway, so whilst you're there, spread the word and tell all your retro gaming chums who still remember blowing on a cartridge. Fuck two. No, not you, madam. Blowing on a cartridge to get it to work. Your support helps us keep these retrospectives coming. Plus, we are so close to our first proper YouTube milestone of 500 subscribers. And the only way we're going to hit that goal is with your help. So click like, share and subscribe. Now back to the action now, let's see what other surprises this paper thin world has in store for us. Oh, a bit like our Paper Mario, the thousand year door for the GameCube, appears in book. A thousand one video games you must play before you die by Tony Mott, the absolutely fantastic editor of Edge magazine.
Now, for those of you watching who haven't played Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door, the game doesn't actually have any voiceover, so to speak. The only real voice acting, if you can call it that, would be Charles Martinet's occasional whoops and grunts as Mario. But what we can talk about is the soundtrack. The soundtrack is composed by Yoshito Harino and Yuka Tasayoko, and it's classic Nintendo. Their work on the game is highly regarded and contributes significantly to its nostalgic charm and immersive experience. Yuka Sujiyoko, known for her extensive work on the Fire Emblem series, brought her signature melodic and engaging style to the Paper Mario series. She composed music for the original Paper Mario and continued her work with The Thousand Year Door. Her compositions are known for their memorable and emotive qualities, which help define the atmosphere of the game. Yoshito Harano, who contributed with Yuka Sujiyoko on this project, contributed to creating a diverse and dynamic soundtrack. Together, they crafted a score that perfectly complements the game's whimsical and adventurous spirit. Their combined efforts resulted in a soundtrack that enhances the storytelling and gameplay, making each chapter feel unique and vibrant. The soundtrack features a range of styles, from upbeat and playful tunes to more dramatic and intense pieces, reflecting the various themes and settings within the game. This variety keeps the player engaged and adds depth to the overall experience, don't you know? Overall, their work on Pippa and Mario the Thousand Year Door stands out as a highlight in both of their careers, celebrated for its creativity and the ability to invoke a sense of nostalgia whilst enhancing the game's narrative and gameplay. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door was highly praised, scoring 87 out of 100 on both Metacritic and Game Rankings. Critics loved the plot, with GameSpot noting the thrill of discovery in each chapter, and Eurogamer appreciating its whimsical storyline, comparing it favourably to traditional RPGs. The characters and their interactions also received positive feedback, though some felt the story started off slow, and Eurogamer found the extensive text a drawback. Now, our paper-based gameplay mechanic were well received, with 1UP calling it a clever and cohesive approach. The battle system, which introduced timing elements, were praised for being fun and engaging, and the audience feature during battles was highlighted as a unique touch. The visuals, however, received mixed reviews. GameSpot praised the game's artistic presentation, but some critics felt the graphics were not a significant improvement over its predecessor. The audio was generally well received though, with IGN calling it pure game music, though the lack of voice acting was noted. RPG Gamer mentioned the music was overall good, but found the battle music was quite repetitive. The game won Console Role Playing Game of the Year at the 8th Annual Interactive Achievement Awards, and was nominated for several other awards. It was ranked 56th in official Nintendo Magazine's 100 Greatest Nintendo Games, and placed 93rd on Edge Magazine's 100 Best Video Games of 2007. In 2023, it was included in Time Extension's Best JRPGs of All Time list, and GameSpot called it the Best Mario RPG of All Time. I mean, in terms of sales, it was a best-selling game in Japan at first week, selling around 159,000 units. Now, it went on to sell 409,000 units in Japan, and 1.23 million in North America, reaching 1.91 million copies sold worldwide worldwide by December of 2007. Now when you stick to the main story, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door takes about 30-ish hours to finish, but if you're someone who loves exploring every nook and cranny and aims for 100% completion, you're looking at around 55 hours of gameplay. Hmm. Well, there you have it ladles and jelly spoons, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, a game that's as charming as it is challenging, and it's left an indelible mark on all of us who played it back in the day. Absolutely. I mean, it's one of those rare games that manages to be both clever and entertaining, unlike Keith's tea, which is just, uh, well, it's an acquired taste. Boy, my tea's legendary, I'll have you know, but 
yeah right, this game's got something special. Even an old chap like me can see that. And Keith, if you can appreciate it, anyone can. For those of you who haven't played it yet, it's never too late to dive into this whimsical world, whether you're revisiting it or experiencing it for the first time. It's a journey well worth taking. Now, true, on the GameCube it is rather expensive, but the game recently received a Nintendo Switch remaster slash remake. Nintendo announced the remake of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door for the Nintendo Switch during their direct presentation in 2023. This version had improved graphics, animation and music, plus some new features just for the Switch. These include a better fast travel system, more items and coin capacity, and the option to switch from the original GameCube soundtrack, a gallery for viewing art and music, and two new secret bosses. Now, changes were made to the game's English script. Some scenes were removed, like the one where Goombarella deals with catcalling Goombas, and some were restored to match the original Japanese script, including Vivian's portrayal as a trans character. Remake released in May of 2024. Nintendo Life noted the game runs at 30 frames per second instead of original 60 FPS, but said it didn't significantly impact their experience. The remake was very well received when it was released, scoring an average of 88 out of 100 on Metacritic, don't you know? Some people criticised the lower frame rates and the lack of new content, but the improved visuals and changes that reduced the backtracking were praised. Critics also appreciated the same things they loved about the original GameCube version, such as the story, battle system and locations. And if you're looking for a good laugh, the dialogue in this game will not disappoint. It's like the writers knew exactly how to keep things fun and engaging. Uh, speaking of fun and engaging, if you've enjoyed this retrospective review, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and share your favourite moments from Paper Mario in the comments down below. I mean, I really do enjoy reading them, you know. Yeah, when we get them. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of our future retrospectives. We've got plenty more classic games to explore and we'd love for you to join us on this nostalgic journey. So until next time, keep those retro memories alive, whether that's with a controller in your hand or a pint of best by your side. Ah, cheers to that. Thanks for watching everyone and remember it's never just about the games, it's about the stories we share and the fun we have along the way. Also, if you wouldn't mind not mentioning that I lost the game. Well said Key. Sorry, you did what? Hmm. Thanks for joining us. Cheerio. See you soon. Now Keith, you did what? <laughs>